Hey guys, hope you are all well. Welcome back to another video. Long time no talk on this topic. So today I'm going to be doing a perioral dermatitis update as well as informing you about this new fantastic skin condition I now have, um, which is probably more common than perioral dermatitis anyway, but I'm going to speak a bit about that. I firstly want to start by saying if you are coming here because of perioral dermatitis and you're on your journey to curing it or getting rid of it as best you can, I would definitely recommend you watch my first video first if you haven't seen that called How I Cleared My Perioral Dermatitis. That covers most of what you need to know and this is just an update and adding to that so some of what I'm gonna say might not make sense if you don't know what you're dealing with so definitely watch the first one if you haven't and yeah let's get straight into it I think so. I made the video last June about my perioral dermatitis and yeah I have been pretty lucky I haven't had another like big flare-up since like last Feb like I'm meaning like February 2019 I was really worried in the summer of 2020 that I was going to get it again because it seemed to have been flared up in the summertime the time before but no it'd been fine just using the stuff that I was using in my last video if I started to get a little bit of it I knew how to control it uh, I still get the dryness under my nose quite a bit or I might get a few of the little spots but I just pop on what I showed in my last video and it cures it pretty well. So I thought I'd just start by kind of showing you the products I'm still using for my dermatitis as well as some new stuff, um, some that did and didn't work for me because it may or may not work for you and also new information I have learnt about it or new things I've introduced into my care for it that I didn't know last time. So first I want to start by showing you the stuff I'm using that I always have been. My good old rose hip oil. I have used this since I was 16 and I am going to be 24 this year. This is awesome and yeah this has been great for my perioral dermatitis and also my rosacea which isn't the other thing I am dealing with now. Uh, moisturizer wise I am still using the Clinique Moisture Surge this is the intense one I think it's I just had the moisture moisture surge in the last video but now I use the moisture surge intense and I actually think this is better and my skin likes this better once again using the apple cider vinegar on diluted half apple cider vinegar half water on oh ooh, dropping things on a cotton pad and just popping that on any areas that I was getting it to dry it up and my absolute god scent this is the one thing that I think has been the best and if I start to get that little little dots coming up and redness and dryness related to PD this is the first thing I'll pull out and put on it and then by the next morning it's all clear so if you can hear the rain it just started pouring now and I hope the lighting's all right because the natural light's terrible today is that better I just put my lights on or is that more shadowy? I don't know. This video is not about lighting anyway. So yeah, the Lion's Leaf Zinc and Calendula uh, Cream is still my number one product if you're suffering this. As I said in my last video, if there's anything you purchase after watching this, make it be this. I'm telling you, I've had people in my comments in my last video say they went and bought this and now their perioral dermatitis is gone. So that's definitely the best thing I can recommend if you're suffering it. So a few other things I've kind of figured out. Uh, your perioral dermatitis can be bacterial or fungal. I presume mine was fungal because it responded really well to canestin, which is an antifungal cream. Um, a few of you guys asked me in my comments on my last video where to get this. I'm in Australia and you can just buy it from chemists. I actually don't know if you're overseas, if you'll be able to buy this, but I'm sure your local pharmacy chemist, we call it chemist in Australia, would sell an antifungal cream. Clotrimazole, I think it is the first. You want that ingredient and you don't want any cortisone, you don't want any steroids in it, you just want the antifungal cream. So yeah, as I said in my last video, still don't touch those steroids, throw them in the bin. And someone else also asked me in my last video what cleanser I use. So I have used this cleanser for years and it did not aggravate my face at all. I actually found it quite soothing. So this is the Michael Todd Honey and Oat Gentle Daily Cleanser. So this is organic. You can buy this online if you just look up Michael Todd. I really like his skincare. I like the uh, exfoliator, the fruit enzyme exfoliator as well. Honey is also good. I think it's um, antibacterial. 
If your dermatitis is bacterial and not fungal, this will probably help, but it's still just really gentle if your skin's sensitive and irritated anyway. So if you wanna know if yours is antibacterial or fungal, I would definitely recommend using an antifungal and seeing how it responds to that. If it responds well, you know you're dealing with a fungal period dermatitis. If it is not responding, then you want to look at more antibacterial agents such as the honey. If you want to know what ingredients or products are antibacterial, just give it a Google. Here is my update. I am no by no means at the end of my skin journey. Yes, I don't have the periol dermatitis all around my mouth and under my eyes and that anymore but i reckon this summer just kind of gone I, I thought i got my periol dermatitis back because it's i started getting the same kind of spots and redness on my cheeks like around here and kind of on my forehead so it was like everywhere the periol dermatitis hadn't been and i'm just like is this even periol dermatitis anymore because it's not around my mouth? Turns out I am now suffering rosacea. So there's a lot of research going into the fact that periol dermatitis and rosacea are like sisters or cousins or whatever, but they are related. So it's actually quite common and was in this periol dermatitis group and some other people in that group had cured their periol dermatitis, but then had rosacea. I don't know if like period dermatitis was the warning like you're about to get rosacea. There's different types of rosacea which is another thing I've learned. I think there's four or five types from memory. I know I have type 2. Type 2 rosacea is when you have redness and you also have like the little bumps under your skin. Um, kind of like this, similar to what you get with the period dermatitis but I find the ones I have from rosacea are actually a little bit bigger. Another thing I did that I really think has helped my dermatitis as well as my rosacea that I'm having now a massive trigger for me is heat so not putting my face directly in the sun trying to stay out of heat I know it's hard in summer I will have redness and lumps coming up within an hour of sitting out in the heat another thing that has dramatically made a big difference especially with redness is not washing my face in the hot water in the shower oh my god that's made such a big difference since I started doing that so I will simply switch my water to a cooler setting and it doesn't have to be cold but just more warm rather than like really hot and that has been so much better for my skin but yeah so with the rosacea i started getting it first i thought it was periol dermatitis and i started using the products on it whilst i still think this has helped a little bit with the rosacea um it just helps to kind of not make it as agitated but it's not curing it like it did with my pd i'm still on my journey with rosacea i'll definitely have to do an update but this is so new to me joined a few rosacea uh, groups on facebook and that was where i started reading all these products and finding out about it and then i heard about the lovely demodex mite my god if you don't know what that is give it a google it's disgusting but pretty much most people who have rosacea especially type 2 uh, having it's the demodex mites on your skin irritating so everyone has these demodex mites that like to sit in our on our skin and in our hair follicles it's disgusting but yeah we all have it when I first started getting the rosacea I bought sulfur ointment um, which looks like this I actually felt like this irritated my face more I was getting more lumps and the smell I just could not stand the smell it's not even a bad smell it's not even that potent but I hated the smell of this and it did nothing for me so that was like gone another thing i tried was nazuru anti-dandruff shampoo um once again i got the sulfur ointment off amazon and i got this from chemist warehouse and once again this did nothing as well i just thought it irritated my this actually like burnt my skin my skin felt really raw and red it was not good but since getting this rosacea i've had like bumps on my back on the top of my back as well um, which could probably be the demodex mites, which I've never had back acne or anything But I find this tends to be okay on my back It will help clear that up a little bit But on my face, it's just too strong and it probably did more harm than good to be honest But these things might work for you depending on your skin I know these things are also supposed to be really good for the perioral dermatitis So there's two other things you could try I just didn't know about them when I was in the heat of my flare-up So I kind of was reading into demodex mites because my face gets itchy as well um, and yeah there's so much research you can kind of do on it rosacea rescue on facebook is a fantastic group um, if you are suffering this just to hear everyone's stories and what's worked for them i have ordered some horse 
paste from Amazon. What horse paste is, it's like an anti-parasite paste. They use it for horses to stop them getting parasites, but so many people with rosacea use it and there hasn't been any problems. Put that on their face every night for like 12 weeks and that's meant to like kill off all the demodex mites and the results in that group are amazing so i actually ordered that off amazon on the 27th of march and it still hasn't arrived which is really annoying but or well, good things take time so i'm hoping that that's going to be my answer i presume the cause of my rosacea is demodex mites because i bought this and this is what's made the biggest difference in my skin so i got this off amazon and it's actually a natural one. Demodex Control Natural Anti-Demodex Facial Mask. So it looks like this. And the key ingredient in this is tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is really good if you think that you're suffering from demodex mites. So I would just put this mask on my face, leave it to dry for like 10 minutes and take it off. Don't do it too often. When I first got it, I got a bit excited because I was like seeing results from using it and seeing the bumps go away. So I used it like three nights in a row and then my skin was like peeling because it really dried my skin out. So I wouldn't recommend using this more than once or twice a week. If you have dry, really sensitive, scaly skin already, no more than once a week. But this has been a godsend. If you're wondering if you do have demodex mites but you're not really sure, start out with this and see how you go. And then you can work your way up to the horse pace to really get the best results. I don't even know for sure that I have demodex mites. I have not had a dermatologist like do a skin scraping test or anything to see if I've got the mites on my skin or... I don't know what they do, get the microscope and look, but uh, this is just the best thing that I have gotten results for. And that's the thing, if you are suffering from the demodex mites, um, everything else you're going to put on your skin is not really going to give you much relief. And that's what I was finding. I was like, I'm putting all these soothing products that people recommend for rosacea and that, and they're not doing anything. So that's when you have to get the stuff that's just going to kill the little suckers. And this is what I've seen the most results with. Quite thin, you don't need much if you eye open it. And it's like a green, a minty green kind of color. Smells like eucalyptus, like tea tree oil. It smells good though. So I'm presuming I have my type 2 rosacea from Demodex Mart. So once I start the horse pace, it'll be interesting to see if that makes a difference. There's another product I want to try that I have seen lots of people in the rosacea group say has worked for them. It's by The Ordinary. If you're suffering rosacea and you, your skin is itchy, I definitely would recommend looking into the Demodex Mites. I can't really elaborate too much more on rosacea because as I said it's new to me and this is just what I've been trying and working out but once I actually found out that rosacea is caused most of the time by mites and not just like my skin being a bitch that was when I was like wow this is a whole new world when you start looking into that but yeah I think that covers everything I wanted to say especially about my period dermatitis but I have both conditions fairly well under control my rosacea is not as severe as other people's it is definitely not flared up at the moment. I have had some severe flare-ups. I don't even think I've taken photos because I've hated how it looks that much. I just haven't wanted to take any photos when it's been really bad. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments and I can definitely answer them. I'll definitely have to do a rosacea update once I have started the horse pace and see how I go with that. But in terms of skincare and that for the rosacea, dermatitis and rosacea go like hand in hand. All this stuff that has worked for my PD has also been good for my rosacea. So the rosehip oil, Clinique moisturizer, this cleanser. Um, but yeah, I'm not going too heavy on the skincare. I definitely think when your skin's in a sensitive state like that, um, the more products you put on, it's just, it makes it worse. So I actually try to just keep it quite simple and then using as I said, like the mask and stuff, oops, stuff like that. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.